I just starting a presentation. I can't talk. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Sony booth at, for NAB 2018. We're about to start our next presentation, the introduction of our brand new PXW Z280 and PXW Z190 4K camcorders. So gather around and check out the brand new cameras here I'm about to fill you in on. Okay, my name is Thomas Covey. I'm Senior Sales Support Engineer for Sony and I'm happy to introduce these brand new camcorders. Uh, this is the first time these cameras are being seen at, the, uh, at this NAB show. We have a couple of cameras over on the camera set around the corner and a couple more over here on the camera counter. So with that, let's get started. So these are your two new cameras. Just a quick shot of the bodies here. We're going to start off with the uh, PXW Z280. This is the world's first three-chip 4K camcorder. So now if you think back to a very popular camera we had maybe a decade or so ago, we came out with a PMW EX1. So the PMW EX1 hit the market by storm because it was the first three-chip half-inch camcorder and we really took over the marketplace because nobody else offered that kind of technology, that kind of performance in a Handycam camcorder. Now we're doing the same thing where we're going with a 4K three-chip half-inch camcorder. So the Z280 is a brand new camcorder. As you can see here on the slide, it's state-of-the-art image with a 4K 60p at 422 10-bit, so fantastic image quality you can spec right out of the gate. Uh, we've got advanced network features and a number of other uh, professional features. So again, the 4K sensor here, it's three chip. Up until today, up until this show, any camcorder you've seen out there on the market's been a single chip. Uh, there are fantastic cameras, cameras like our PXW FS5, our PXW FS7, we have our F5 and F55 and of course the Veno, all single chip 4K sensors. But with that, there's still a need to have camcorders that give you that deeper depth of field, right? So not, not everybody wants to shoot Super 35, get that super shallow depth of field. If you're running with news or you're following sports, you want to have that extra depth. So what do we do? We come out with a 4K half inch three chip camcorder that can give you that kind of performance. Okay, if you're looking at lensing here, if you are at all familiar with our PXWX200, it's got a really beautiful uh, 17 by lens. This lens has a lot of uh, manual features on it. So unlike most professional camcorders that are Handycam style, where there's all these auto functions getting in your way of being a true professional, this camera has a full ring here that when I pull the ring back and see this orange line here, I've got full manual focus that'll stop on each end. So it'll stop at infinity, it'll stop it on my close point, so I know exactly where I am in terms of my focus marks. I've got a, a zoom that can be put into a full manual mode or servo. When we're in manual mode, the zoom can be the snap zoom. So you, you are getting those fast shots, especially necessary for sporting events or news. And then of course a full iris ring as well. So as you're holding this camera in front of you, you can do that one-handed operation with your zoom focus and iris. And for those instances where maybe you've got too much going on and you do want to take advantage of some of the auto functions, we do have a brand new face detection technology where you can actually register faces. So think about this, you're shooting someone in one scene We've registered the face in the face detection, and then maybe a few scenes later, that person, that same person shows up, camera automatically recognizes that person and knows to keep them in focus. Now, lately in the last several years, Sony's come out with an amazing technology called Variable ND. And there'll be some presentations during the show that talk specifically about variable ND, but I'll, I'll give you the, a brief overview of it right here. Essentially, with variable ND, you're 
able to dial in anywhere from two to seven stops of ND. Uh, this is unlike a normal ND where you usually have two, four, and six stops on a dial, and sometimes it happens where you choose an aperture and that aperture kind of falls in between where you would want your ND to be. So with variable ND, I simply flip the switch over to variable and I can dial in that exact amount of ND that I need to have proper exposure and still keep my desired aperture. Uh, there's some other things you can do as well using uh, the, a auto ND function that's in the camera and that's doing depth of field pulls as well. But again, come back later in the day and we'll, we'll have a full-blown demonstration of variable ND. But this camera has that technology built into it. HLG has also been a big thing with HDR being the prominent way to display images. And you can see the beautiful images behind us uh, in, four, in 8K back there. But for a lot of folks that aren't familiar with grading HDR, HLG gives you that easy in. So it saves you all that time on the back end, and especially if you don't have that experience, you're able to shoot choosing an HLG uh, curve, and then you're able to bring it in, edit like your normal video, and then view it on a monitor using an HLG uh, uh, lookup table. So fast and easy HLG. For HDR, it's really powerful and really easy to use. Because of the performance of this camcorder being half-inch sensors, it's very popular in ENG and in sports. And there's a lot of um, there's a lot of places where wireless technology is now being implemented. So in that wireless technology. Uh, using our content browser mobile application, which is a free app found on the App Store or in Google Play Store. You can use it on a phone or a tablet. There's a number of different functions that I can do using our wireless technology. The first being clip trimming and transfer. So I can view the clips on my phone, set up a little timeline, trim clips, and then when I know that those are the clips that I want, I can send those off to uh, a, an FTP server. I can do FTP file transfer while I'm shooting. Of course, there is the one little, I wouldn't call it a caveat, but you do have to make sure the file is closed. So that file that's being recorded has to close first before it can be sent. But any closed file that's already been recorded can automatically be sent. Of course, we do our MPEG-2 TS UDP streaming. We have uh, some brand new or fairly new services called XDCAM Air, as well as our uh, streaming receiver. And you can stream to those devices uh, with high quality video and a lot of reliability as you'll see as we move forward here. Now one other thing we can do here with the application is remote monitoring and camera control. So I simply connect to the Wi-Fi on the camera with my app, I open up Content Browser Mobile, and there's an image of the camera on screen of what the camera's seeing, and then I have my controls for zoom, focus, iris, white balance, zoom, start, stop, record. So it's a nice little thing to have if you have a producer or somebody that needs to look over your shoulder and view the content, or maybe you're in a tight spot and you can't get to the camera, but you can do those functions from where you're set up. So some of the network functions we can do. Uh, using XDCAM Air, it's our cloud-based service. So you're able to stream up to the cloud from XDCAM Air. You can pull down into your you know, NLE systems. Uh, they're currently working on expanding the uh, systems that are available. And then also push it out to your social media. Uh, you can also take remote control from the back at the station or even just do something as simple as uh, clip transfer from the camera to that location to an FTP server. Okay, Something new here in this uh, camera and its capabilities, and this is also going to be uh, some features that we're adding across other models as well, and you can check out that technology over on this end of the booth. But we are now doing what's called 
dual link. So prior to this, we were doing a single link for streaming. So you'd be using a, an LTE dongle, plugging that into the camera, and doing your stream or your FTP file transfer over that single link. Now to increase your reliability and increase the performance of the stream, we now are doing this with two. So that's giving you what's called QoS streaming, which is different than a straight stream. It's quality of service. It's going to allow you to stream with reliability. There's technologies built in there that send extra packets, that look for missing packets, and that ensure that the integrity of your stream stays even when there's uh, some significant packet loss. And of course, you can also stream to our PWS 110 RX1 server, which can take up to 30 streams, output two of those through SDI, and you can stack units if you need to get more cameras in or more streams out. So I've highlighted the um, 4K or the UHP, uh, UDH uh, resolutions here. So 3840, 2160 is your 4K. And you can see the different frequencies here, uh, up to 60P. And we'd be at 300 megabits per second at 10 bit 422. So amazing quality that you're going to get. You have the ability to choose either XAVC-I or XAVC-L if you want those longer form recordings or if you want iframe for that, those recordings where you want to do some color grading or a lot of special effects. Now also this camera is capable of doing 4K and HD simultaneous recording. So this is a little bit of an eye chart, but you could see using the XAVC Intra or Long Op Codex, I can, use, I can um, also get an HD version using our MPEG-2 codec. So now you can archive your 4K content and work with your HD if you're not ready to be in that uh, 4K world yet. Four independent channels of audio recording. So previous models of this uh, camcorder, the HD version, had two channels main and two channels backup. This is actually four independent channels of audio. We can bring that audio in through XLRs, two XLRs, or through our uh, MI shoe, which is a hot shoe that allows you to bring in two channels at one time. And you can see four independent pods for adjusting your audio levels. We've added 12G on the SDI output. Uh, this, of course, future-proofing your camera for other devices that are coming to the market with 12G interface. And we've added a second MI shoe. So feedback that we got was, well, when I use my MI shoe for audio on the front of the camera, I can no longer use my video light. And of course, even though these cameras are amazing in sensitivity and in low light situations, you still want to have that light on the camera for fill. So we listened. And so now what we have is one MI shoe in the front that we use for the light. So you can actually power your light from the camera. Uh, you can actually trigger the light to come on and off with the record button. And then also on the back of the camera, which was normally a cold shoe, we now have a second hot shoe that you can utilize your uh, single or dual channel wireless system. Okay. Uh, this is basically a general slide showing the overall interfaces of the camera. You have your 12G SDI, which is also includes 3G and 1.5. You have your audio with your XLRs and a headphone jack, MI shoe, uh, remote control for length, and your network interface. So when you're not using Wi-Fi or, or a 3G um, LTE connection, 3G, 4G LTE connection, you can use a more reliable Ethernet RJ45 connection if you have access to that. So next up is the PXW Z190. So previous model we just talked about, in case you just showed up, was the Z280. That was a half inch, three chip, 4K camcorder. This is our third inch 4K three chip camcorder. And you can see some of the differences here between the PXW Z280 and the Z190. 
They're both 4K, three chip. One's half inch, the other third inch. The 280 has full manual on the lens. And while there are some, some manual functions on the lens, it's not fully manual. So you won't get that snap zoom, but you can get a full manual focus. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, HLG and S-Log on the 280, while we're sticking with just HLG on, on the 190. So the 280 being, having some more capabilities where you can grade your own footage. Most of the users that are going to be going in the direction of a 190 are not that well versed in uh, grading, so make it easy for them and just put in the HLG. Uh, OLED viewfinder on the back piece. So you have your LCD panel on the front and then on the back for those instances where an LCD panel won't be sufficient to see the images in bright, bright sunlight, you've got that OLED, which is going to increase your resolution and make focusing a lot easier for you. Uh, S by S cards on the 280, SD cards on the 190. Of course, with the S by S cards, you can use adapters, depending on the codec you're choosing, to go to either XQD cards or to SD cards as well. Uh, we've got both the XAVC Long Op and Intra on the 280, and XAVC Long Op only on the 190. Uh, there is also MPEG 2 on both and 3G SDI along with S, uh, HDMI on, on the 190 where we get that extra 12G on the 280. Uh, Genlock and network here. Uh, there is network but no Genlock on the 190, but we do have these amazing little switchers like the MCX500 that we're using for this presentation that have built-in frame syncs that you can use with the 190, okay? and you do have that Wi-Fi remote using Content Browser Mobile. So again, the sensors, it is three chip, it is 4K, it is up to 60P, and it is 10-bit 422 in HD. What I love about this camera is the lens. The lens is a 25 times optical zoom lens. It does have both manual and automatic focus, and a full-size iris ring. It does have a servo zoom, and you do have a manual mode with the servo, but it's not quite uh, fully manual. But you can see uh, it has a pretty wide range starting at 28.8 millimeters on the wide side. Uh, the formats you have available are XCVC Long Op, as well as our MPEG-2 uh, 422 and our MPEG-420 for those uh, legacy formats that some of you may still be using. Again, similar interfaces to the 280, except minus the 12G. Uh, and uh, we do have that dual MI shoe on this camera as well. There are two available licenses for the 190. Now these are included in the 280, but they are necessary licenses for the 190. The first would be an MPEG HD upgrade. That's going to give you your MPEG 422 using the CBK SLMP. And then the network upgrade license. So not everybody wants to do wireless streaming, so why charge everyone for it? So for those folks who do want to do uh, streaming functions with this camera, pay a little extra for your network upgrade license and you can have those same capabilities. Okay, we're scheduled um, to have the cameras have version two and the cameras available right around the December time frame. Or actually, cameras will be introduced in June and September and then they'll hit version two right around December. Okay. Uh, this is one of my favorite eye charts. It's always a pleasure to read these, but you can see the different specifications of each camera. Half inch 4K over here, uh, third inch 4 over here, and this is comparing to our PXWX200 model. So these two models here, the Z280 and the X200, this would be the HD model that came just prior to the 280, 
and now we have the new model here. So come back uh, throughout the day for some further presentations. Our next presentation is going to be at 12.45 uh, to give you a hint on how to shoot HDR uh, using HLG. And that'll be uh, Rob Scribner, who's here in our Sony booth. Thank you for your time and uh, enjoy the show.